we're here in Montana right now. I'm just outside of Dillon, Montana. You got the Gallatin River that runs back through here, and this property in backdrop is just stunning. If you if you like scenery, or if you're a hunter like I am, you know you got snow-covered mountains all around, all these beautiful draws and, and drainages, and, and lots and lots of wild game. You know, when I got the invitation from Tim uh, Schnell to come on this hunt, it was, it was exciting to me because Tim and I, probably 15 years ago, got to spend a lot of time hunting together in Texas. And, you know, when he invited me to come up here to his ranch, I, I jumped all over it right away. You know, not only was it going to be good business time, good friendship time, but a chance at a great deer. Well, it is well below 30 this morning. I don't even know with the wind chill probably down 15, 16. And we're trying to get geared up. As you can see, there's white stuff on the ground. We're up in Montana and we're going on a whitetail hunt. The rut is just kind of kicking off, so it ought to be pretty good. But I'll tell you one thing. For me, this old Texas boy, he's got to dress up and dress warm for these conditions here because this is a little bit unusual. I'm used to a little bit warmer conditions, but when you get a chance to go hunt Montana in the rut, you don't turn it down. Alongside Wade is Ben Smith from GSM Outdoors to help scout and be a second pair of eyes out in this vast game rich valley. You know, Ben and I had, had have turkey hunted a little bit down in Texas. He's come and visited us at our place, and, and he and I were talking strategy on this, and he had a lot of good insight on places to go and how to set up, and, you know, was really big and keen on trying to get up high and patterning some of these deer, seeing what they were doing, seeing some of the, you know, trails that they were using, seeing some of the areas they were crossing so we could make some different moves on us. So we were starting out real high on a lot of these ridges, and the amount of game that you would see every time you sit down was, I mean, you would lose count at a couple hundred every time. Yeah, so we're actually in, in a low area uh, in between a couple different mountain ranges, and we're on some crop fields uh, that they're running on these big pivot wheels on these big uh, crop fields that these deer come out of the bottoms and eat in, and then they head back into the uh, the willows and the brush and uh, they bed up during the day. It's such a big area, it's hard to really fully watch everything at one time just because there's all these little cuts and uh, areas that they can run through so quick. So to have two sets of eyes and really be able to see everything, it just helps to have multiple sets of eyes glassing the entire time. Uh, and that's just one thing I love about it, you know. It really, you spend a lot more time glassing out here than you probably would on some other hunts. You know, you can literally sit there and glass for four or five hours straight. This morning we had lots of deer just funneling out of this. You can see where they're feeding up on those fields there and coming down in here to water and bed up. And so a lot of deer go that way. So I want to get back over here and two shooters this direction here. So, you know, we're going to let them all bed down and then we'll hike back out and around, go by the edge of that mountain and kind of go down that ranch road there. And you can see those pivots that are out there in the distance and we're going to get somewhere around in there where the deer are going to come to us because tonight it'll look like a parade of deer going out here now. As you can see, they, they go as far as you can look back up to that mountain there, but somewhere in here we'll have some come our way. Winds picked up about 20, <laughs> 25, which uh, made the temperature wind chill drop a lot. 
all these deer bedded down in this little creek bottom in front of us. They should move out into these alfalfa fields tonight. You can see pivots just stretched out for miles, and that's pretty famous for this area. Winds coming left to right. We're in here really early. I mean, it's probably noon. These deer probably shouldn't get up till, I don't know, 3 o'clock. But from 3 o'clock on, we ought to have a lot of activity. And hopefully one of them big whitetails we saw earlier today, they were just right over this little ridge here. And there was two shooters in there with a doe. We'll just see what happens. like you, he likes to sleep. Spring him up, he just passed right there, big body with small antlers. We set up on this spot you know, because we had saw three shooters earlier today. But, uh, you know, we kind of hoped they'd work out to the alfalfa, but they haven't worked out here. So we're going to let it get dark, ease out of here, and come back in the morning. The next morning, Wade heads back out to the same bluff he sat out the morning before. You know, while we're sitting there, you know, on these on these bluffs, both of us are glassing almost nonstop while we're up there. And then all of a sudden, here comes this big buck coming out of that brush and coming dead at us. He's coming. Yes, sir. Coming our way. See him right down here, about 180. Are you on him? I've got too much brush. I do not have a clear shot. This eight point had, had come through some cottonwoods, was skirting at us on a dead run, and when Zdeni was moving off to the side there, and when Kevin said got him, I took the safety off because I thought the next hole he come out was going to be perfect to me to be able to take this shot. And this was a good looking buck. I was pretty jacked up. My heart was starting to pound pretty hard. And when he stepped out and I threw my rifle up, all I could see was deer. But between me and that deer was branches. And he just kept going to the left and kept going to the left. And he never stopped. I never had what I felt like was a clear, good, concise shot. Didn't matter how close he was. Didn't matter how big he was. I just. I just didn't feel like I could take that shot. I wanted to take that shot. The safety was off. I was ready to go. I was on fire, but he just finally disappeared. He's either in this set or he, like you said, he could have turned and he's got down off. that got down that line. But he's in here somewhere. I mean, he didn't get. No, he didn't get outside left or right of that because it's too much terrain for us not to have seen him. Huh? He might just be holding tight in there somewhere too. Pretty thick in there. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Eggs and bacon. Sounds good to <laughs> My me. My toes are so cold. We're halfway through. Seen snow, seen deer. The rut's definitely going on, so we'll uh, get back at it up here in the big Montana country. Well, with only two hunts left, Wade makes the call to set up in the fields where the deer have been bedding down. I don't like to go into what I call their bedroom. I don't want to go where they go behind closed doors. I mean, that's their spot. That's their sanctuary. But we were running out of time. I mean, we had one evening hunt left and one morning hunt left, and we kind of took, took a chance. And we just, just me and Kevin decided to ease in there, less bodies, less scent. And we worked into the wind, we put some scent out, got settled in there, and I mean, you talk about a show. Sure is a pretty sunset. Kind of get pretty excited when you're deer hunting, you see something like that. Right now, we don't have any deer around us at all, but I just hear a lot of grunting back over to my left. We've seen chasing all day long. This has been a phenomenal Montana rut hunt. But everything we saw that was big was four, five, six hundred yards away. We made a move tonight to get down into this bottom, and it's really paid off with some great action, with the exception of a mature deer, but that's okay. You're not always going to find them in front of you like that. When you, when you can see action like this in a sunset like that, I say that's a pretty good hunt in my book. It's about 21 degrees. We're going to try to ease up down this road here, get set up. We just got out of the Viking. We're going to slide up the side of this mountain. There's giant, giant alfalfa fields all through here. The big pivots off to our left is a creek that runs into the Gallatin River. These deer are rutting pretty hard. You know, basically we're looking for a big boy chasing a doe. Try to make a plan from there. I mean, we may see a deer a thousand yards away and have to make a move. We may have them run right by us. We'll just go sit up and see. You know, the morning hunts for us had been been pretty tough, honestly. You know, you these fields are so big. How do you get how do you get to that field um, in the dark without bumping a thousand animals? I mean, there's pronghorn, mule deer, and whitetail all out there. And so, you know, we had been setting up way off in the distance and trying to get them to come to us, but the bucks kept stopping short. They kept, you know, all those scrapes were were right in there where we had gone the night before. But I knew I couldn't get down in there. I mean, there was just no way to get down in there. You know, as each moment just kind of went on, it was it, the realization was beginning to sink in to me that what a great week in Montana. My tag was going home with me, no matter, you know, I wasn't going to shoot a small buck. He was going to have to be a big one. And so, you know, we started gearing up and packing up and we, we jumped in the Viking and we're kind of just meandering around looking at some other property and scouting around and, you know, anything's possible in the rut. You just never know. And this was fixing to become one of those moments. We're on the back side of the ranch and we're looking back towards one of the pivots we had set up on early in the in the hunt, looking back towards the creek bottom. And there's pronghorn out there and there's mule deer out there and there's half a dozen whitetail bucks bedded down. 
this one's got a rack on him. You can see it. We were, I mean, Kevin zoomed in and zoomed in and zoomed in, and I'm looking at my binoculars. I said, oh, it's a pretty good one. And we kind of devised in a plan to drive all the way around the ranch. I mean, this is a big piece of property. It took us 15, 20 minutes to drive down these hills and around these turns, and down in these valleys. But we kind of had a, a good idea where this deer was. You know, I had counted off the amount of tires I needed to walk by on the pivot. I needed to go to the fourth tire and I needed to go over this ridge. And there was a big ridge right there. And that buck was bedded down and he was locked on that doe. So, you know, we're going hiking. We still got a few hours till we got to be at the airport and we're going hiking. We're back. God. Does the distance a little bit. I can get my range finder up in time. That's one of my cardinal rules right there. I'm telling you, I always range it. I, you can see the deer running up over the the snow right now. Golly, what a buck. What a great Montana buck. You know, if you hunt long enough, that's absolutely going to happen. I mean, he's, uh, you're going to miss one. Oh, he's breeding. Is he? There he is. That buck's genetics was just supposed to be passed on, is about all I can say. Because I, I mean, a clean miss and then to watch a deer run off and breed on the side of a mountain with this backdrop, <laughs> I was just not supposed to get him. <laughs> wow. I need a helicopter to airlift me out after that. Oh, what an adventure and a memorable entry into the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries. See you, buddy. You got me. You win. I bow to you. <laughs> I vow to be back. Another day. <laughs> <laughs>